Uh, I'm Kathleen Allison. I'm executive director of Rice Succeed Virtual Schools and one of the uh, administrators here. And um, my executive director title would be very synonymous for what you see in brick and mortar schools as a superintendent. So doing a lot of district work. And I'm gonna walk you guys through the first couple of slides talking a little bit about what federal programs are and why we are involved with federal programs and what it does for the school and the district and some of our accountability. And then our school administrators will walk you guys through some of the programs we feature here um, that we are able to do because of federal programs. So I am gonna now turn off my camera. Um, I am going to introduce our administrator. So our principal is Clayton Treehall. He's a principal of the both the uh, the high school, the academy, and the middle school. <laughs> How are you guys all doing? <laughs> and Tara Downs is our vice principal of the high school and the academy. Uh, she's also our Title I coordinator and uh, should be doing the last half of the slides for us as we're talking through the programs. And we also have Molly Strauss, which is our vice principal of our middle school. And our middle school is just eighth grade this year. It's a new program for us and we're just getting started with it. And we're pretty excited what our middle school has brought to the table for eighth graders. So I'm going to, as much as possible, I am going to um, get you guys through these slides and try and do a good translation of um, federal programs uh, language. And uh, oftentimes, just like legislation, just like state legislation and federal legislation, it can be pretty cumbersome. So Title I-A is a federal program and it's a source of funding for schools. And um, eligible schools can receive this money from the federal government, but there are a lot of, um, I would say hoops to some degree, but uh, qualifications that need to happen for a school to be able to get the funds. Uh, they have to meet a certain qualification, the student demographics have to match up. But what's very great about Title I funds is it allows for us to use these funds to have additional support for our students. So not just the regular instruction that we're doing online and in our programs, but be able to do other things. And you guys probably have noticed this, parents, we do a lot of intervention based on logging in and being engaged in your courses and your grades. And many of those things are part of our Title I program and the reason why we're able to do them. We also have additional supports and supplemental curriculum that we use as well. And um, since we've been doing these with Fidelity, we have quite a bit of evidence <laughs> that has really, really um, helped improve our engagement for the students, uh, increased their self-motivation, has increased their knowledge of their grade and really having that engagement with their grade and how their assignments affect their grades. And it also has helped our, our parents as well because that communication is very, very strong. And oftentimes I know uh, it can feel a little bit like nagging. <laughs> but in the online world, because we, you don't have somebody standing over you like you do in a classroom, we have to mimic that in different ways of communication. So for us, we are a school-wide program. So that means all three of our schools do benefit from Title I interventions. Uh, supports and interventions are actions by your teachers, staff, and administration. And like I said, we try to increase engagement. It has allowed us to have greater reach to all our students. And a couple of years ago, we added I Succeed Academy, and this is more of an alternative program. And we added this academy, recognizing the needs of some of our students who come to, uh, to us behind in credit. Um, sometimes you know, a year behind or a year and a half behind it or a large um, portion of their credits behind. And this allows for us to do some credit recovery and some modifications to our courses to allow those students to be able to retake those courses and gain their credits back towards graduation. So that's been very exciting for us. It has also been the catalyst for us to be able to offer summer school. And uh, that has also been great too, uh, especially for our students who are coming to us from an at-risk position. Virtual schools are unique um, and we are statewide. <laughs> so our lens and our focus and our perspective is somewhat different from the traditional schools because we see a very wide spectrum of students and needs. And it's not just academic needs. We have students that come to us for a reason and maybe there's something that they've been dealing with emotionally um, 
or something that they need to do in their life to focus differently on their school. And so we often hear from students that tell us, I came to online school because I really just want to focus on my education. I don't need drama. I don't need bullying. I don't need any of those other things. And this is one of the things that online school can provide. Um, we put a little bit in these bullet points about our demographics. Uh, by the end of the year for our high school population, we have a lot of kids who are already turning 18. So we do have kids that are coming back to us or are behind in credit and they're earning credits towards graduation. So it's been really great to be able to offer that to our communities in Idaho. That has been a need and we've really um, ha been very, very proud to help our students gain their diplomas, especially those who have become behind. But we also have students who are average students or they're really just, they're, they're doing okay. They're doing okay in our school. But we really feel like even if they're doing okay, we're still be able, we're being able to have these interventions and these supports for these students because, like I said, in the online world, we need that extra communication. We have a program called AVID, and I don't know if your students are involved in AVID, but AVID is definitely a program that really helps students focus on gaining better academic skills, learning time management, learning how to analyze their grades, learning how to look at their reading assignments and their writing assignments and really craft them in a better way to prepare them for their career or college pursuits. And engagement, like I said, is a number one thing. So we do a lot of that in terms of what we call attendance notices, where we're giving you a weekly heads up if your student is not on track for their due dates for the week. And we also give you guys a heads up in terms of grades. So we really feel like that communication is really important, even if we're not getting that back from parents, that we're putting that out there for you guys. So this is a little bit of the boring part. <laughs> is um, There are lots of layers of accountability for federal programs. There's a lot of checks that happen. This year, we're going to have a federal programs review in January. And really what that is, is just making sure that schools are using the money appropriately, that they're using it to support students and to support their staff in doing quality programs. We have a school-wide improvement plan that we have in place that we use in conjunction with Title I. We have a school leadership team that meets weekly, and the school leadership team has counselors and teachers that represent the departments and administration. And we really focus every single week on program improvement. So it is an ongoing thing. It's not just something we put on paper. It's something that we live and breathe. We have a continuous improvement plan, which is mandated by the state of Idaho that we do. Um, many of the metrics on the continuous improvement plan are very traditional school focused. There's not many that are online school focused. So we handle the online school focus within our school leadership team and some of our own internal strategic plans. We are also uh, accredited by Cognia. And Cognia um, has been a really great accreditation agency who has really been critical in using standards and priorities for online schools. So that helps us do uh, better online quality. And this slide just talks a little bit about the problems between the data that you guys see as parents for schools like the school report card and how it's really problematic for online schools. So this is very traditional focused. We have a lot of mobility. We have a lot of students that are with us, maybe one quarter or two quarters or maybe three quarters. And they're with us because they needed a different option for a period of time. And that's part of our mission as a charter school. We are absolutely OK with that. <laughs> We're also OK with knowing that students may come in their first term and they may not do well. They may struggle because they've never had to be self-motivated or manage their time or really um, dig into things on their own. And that's part of that learning process. And we do find that while students may struggle that first term, they actually, once they get into their second term, their third term, they go, oh, wow, OK, now I know what I need to be doing. Now I know that I need to be on track each week. And this is a really great skill for the 21st century because online learning is not going away. It is a part of online, tra online training is in the workforce, online courses are in colleges. So it is a skill that students need to have. Um, I think that most, most of our mission, we're not trying to replace a traditional school option. Um, oh, thank you so much. I think I wasn't able to see that on my end. So I've got two screens, there you go. <laughs> um, so, 
this is why we want to have parent nights and we have this annually. We are going to send out the recording and these slides and a survey to all the parents as well so that we can get more detailed information and input on what our programs are doing and what you would like to see come up. I do need to mention that we are eligible for COVID grants. Um, we did not take all the eligibility that was available to us as an online school. And part of that is because we're already doing um, digital instruction. We always are, are really robust curriculum. So instead we're focusing on doing things that will enhance the school programming. So I will tell you a little bit more about that. I'll give you some specifics that we're using that money for so far. Um, first of all, much of that money initially is used for safety in the school. Well, we're an online school, so we don't have a lot of those safety needs that traditional schools have. But we do have a, a Boise office that students and parents come into for orientations. We often, when the community spread is not great, we have um, regional orientations that we do. So we ensure that we've got masks, we've got hand sanitizer, we've got things that we can do for mitigation. We do testing in our Boise office. So we have been using that money to ensure that we've got distancing. We also have some um, clear plexiglass things that we do for distancing. We have air purifiers. So we do a lot of that in the study lab. However, right now in the Boise area for our office and study lab, uh, we're having a very large community spread of COVID. So we don't have any in-person tutoring going on at the moment. Uh, one of the other things we wanted to add this year was in-person tutoring in Boise as well as virtual statewide. And we do believe that we'll be able to do that, but just like many of the industries um, across the state, we are having a hard time hiring. Um, many of the school districts are also having a hard time getting substitutes. So we're hoping to be able to find, our goal is maybe to find um, students who are college students who are going into the education field to have a little bit of that background to assist us with being tutors, but honestly, anyone that's got an educational background or an interest or a um, certification in that um, will be great for us. And so we're very anxious to get that going. Two other things we're using the money for, um, IXL and Brain Pop. Those are supplemental uh, curriculum that we can use to assess st student skills. And if we've got gaps, we can assign them um, assignments and modules within their courses. And then we also have access to a social emotional learning module that's online. And that is a big focus of COVID grants is assessing and being able to assist students, especially during this time where it does feel very remote and isolating. And many of the social emotional uh, learning modules are very much for students to look at how they communicate with others, learning civil discourse, learning how to get along, learning how to deal with um, maybe issues that are a little troublesome and giving them some skills for regulating their emotions. So you see a lot of this in the traditional schools as well, but we will have access to online curriculum this year to be able to do that. So I'm gonna turn this over to Tara, but before I do, do you guys have any questions about the COVID funds or any of the accountability pieces of federal programs? No, okay. If you do, like I said, we do, we are gonna send out a survey so that uh, allows for you guys to look at this information again and put in any, any ideas as well. If you have worked in schools or you are familiar with what's available for the education grants, we would love your input as well. So I'm gonna hand this over to Tara to cover the rest of the slides. Great, thanks Katie. So, uh... I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of our specific interventions and programs that we're offering. Um, in your enrollment packment, you did receive a homeschool compact, and that really goes over our philosophy and our goals of working together as a team with um, the administrator, classroom, parent, and student. We just want to support each other and have those open lines of communication to um, work together. And then we are a school-wide uh, Title I where we all of our students get uh, support in one way or the other. And um, 
we do do some identifications for more intensive supports based on a couple different items. For academic criteria every quarter, we look at um, course performance, their grades, how they're doing in each course, um, the engagement, that usually uh, relates to attendance with how much of their class they're getting through, how quickly they're progressing, are they on pace? And then uh, we focus on total credits earned because our end goal is to get all students to graduate on time. So we focus on where are students at and how many more credits they need to achieve to graduate. And our counselors spend a lot of time focusing on that aspect with our students. Our teachers also um, spend a lot of time communicating with each student individually. And if there is a specific focus or item, they can adapt curriculum for um, teaching for that student. And then uh, um, we do uh, look at living situations and then any other unique or special circumstances that arrive with a student. For our specific supports at our high school and middle school and academy, they kind of all start out with general supports and interventions. And so what that means is that we do, when you first start out in orientation, that's either online or in person, that gives us a chance to meet with the student and the parent, walk you through our program, answer any questions one-on-one, -on -one, get the student started with their um, email and courses. Then obviously our teachers are working every day with video instruction, um, they have live office hours, meeting with students one-on-one -on -one through Google Hangouts, chats, and that outreach to help a student be successful in their course. Each student has an advisory teacher that checks in with them weekly. Um, it get, works on attendance and anything that is coming up with the school. We have a resource page that offers a lot of support. Uh, we have a community for our students and uh, we are starting next quarter our loudmouth weekly communications through text message. Besides moving past just our general support for all students, we have strategic supports and interventions on a week to week basis. So it uh, looks at if the student has taken the course before, what can we do to help them uh, succeed this time? We look at where their grades are at certain weeks, um, their attendance and how that's progressing. With our attendance policy, um, if they do receive five absences, then we have an engagement conference where the advisory teacher sits down with the parent and the student and just kind of gets an idea of where they're struggling, um, a plan that they can put together for success to finish out the quarter, and just really working together in that communication format. And then if needed, we do have intensive support interventions, and that goes referring to our special education services. Um, when we are able to, we have our one-on-one -on -one study tutors in our regional labs. Uh, our teachers are always open for one-on-one -on -one video chats and just communication. And then we all have our alternative school based on need. So we do offer a special education services for our students. Uh, they would be assigned a caseworker and our caseworkers have less than 25 students each. Each SPED student has a one hour service time with their caseworker where they can uh, focus in on their coursework and kind of work through items together. We have SPED students that are taking uh, essential courses, which are just kind of pared down more appropriate learning level classes. And then we also have them enrolled in regular courses and we just offer additional support and accommodations for them. On the flip side, we have a lot of advanced opportunities too. We work a lot with different colleges. We have numerous dual credit 
uh, courses set up so our students can earn college credits while uh, taking standard gen ed classes with us. We also offer honors courses and we have an advanced diploma track where students can earn an advanced diploma with us. We have an AVID program, which Katie talked a little bit about earlier. And then we have career pathways that are set up through CSI and regionally around the state. So AVID is a program that we're very proud of. We're one of the uh, only online virtual schools that is able to offer this. It focuses a lot on preparing for the future, whether that's college or career bound. We offer an elective course that students can take uh, throughout their high school career that work on organization, reading, writing, um, it gives them a chance to collaborate. And then in the high school course, we focus a lot also on either college or job applications. And then we're there to help those students that our end goal is to go to college to figure out federal funding, apply for scholarships, help them with their college applications and so on. So uh, like I was saying, we have our AVID elective course. In middle school, all uh, of our students take the Intro to AVID class. And then if they would like to continue on, it's offered as an additional elective. And then it is open every quarter for all of our high school students. It is organized by week and it's very collaborative where there's live sessions, the students meet together, uh, they discuss lessons, they do collaborative group activities and work together to uh, focus on their end goals, whatever that is. And on our next slide, we have uh, some really great links with more information. If you're interested about the AVID program specifically, there's a video that kind of goes over student experience. If you have any more questions, you can always reach out to our AVID coordinator, uh, Mary Silov, or fill out the interest form and we can get your student signed up or at least some more one-on-one -on -one discussion about the program. So even though we're an online school, we stu still focus on doing parent involvement activities. It just looks a little bit different than a brick and mortar. We have our in-person orientation um, when it's safe and we're able to do that. And then we offer that virtually. And that's in each region for our new students uh, for, and their parents to come. All of our teachers have welcome videos at the beginning of the courses, just introducing themselves, and setting up that relationship building with the student and the parent. We send out a survey after this meeting and end of the year, and we really encourage that feedback and questions and two-way communication. Parents have the ability to log on to our parent dashboard 24 seven, which means that at any time you can check in and see where your student is at in their courses, what their grades are looking at. We communicate on a regular basis about attendance. Students get uh, weekly progress reports that talk about where they are in their courses. And then something that our counselors work hard on is graduation checklists. And that once again, shows the student where they're at and what they need to accomplish to graduate. So these are some uh, more links that um, go over our parent involvement plan and policy. And then uh, um, we'd love to get all of your suggestions and ideas and feedback through our parent involvement survey that we're gonna be sending out along with this recording and our slides. So at this point, does anybody have any questions or comments that they would like to discuss? The floor is kind of open for you guys at this time. And I know um, Brian had a problem with the mic and Casey, if you had any questions for us, please let us know. Um, if your mic isn't working, then you can also um, put in the chat box 
He can't think of any. Okay. <laughs> um, we would, we do appreciate you attending. And when we send out the slides and the recording and the survey, uh, we'd love to get feedback and input. Um, I, I think one of the things for us this year, especially as you notice in the slides, a lot of the slides were very high school focused because that's what we were doing prior. And we just added in eighth grade. And so we're starting to integrate what we're doing on the eighth grade end of things. Um, we've seen some really great things with our eighth grade program. And part of that is having AVID, intro to AVID for all eighth graders so that they're get, all getting introduced to really good academic strategies and skills. Yeah, I think the AVID's been pretty good uh, helping Molly out, trying to, you know, learn how to do some of this stuff. And and especially the, the teacher's inputs have been great. You know, she's, you know, trying to learn how to do the, the time management stuff. So that's been very helpful. That's right. I really assume you can hear me now. Yes, <laughs> we can hear you now. And Casey, I saw your comment too. And I, uh, we really appreciate that. It's good for us to get the feedback. Um, I think that, you know, depending on what age your, your student is, we typically got to get a lot more feedback and communication from middle school parents um, just because of that age. And once the kids get to high school, we don't get as much feedback from the parents. And, and oftentimes it is because, um, oh, 10th grade. OK, <laughs> it is because, of course, you know, they're getting to a point where they should be a little more independent. They should be taking care of business. But um, we absolutely love that feedback from parents, too, just to allow us to look at what we're doing and what we can add and what we can do better. And like I said, we're we're a niche. We're a specialized school. And um, what we do, we find to be very, very important because we've been able to help a lot of kids who just weren't either successful in the traditional school or just needed that bridge. So appreciate your, your guys' time. Do you guys have any other um, questions or uh, any input for us? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, a big thank you from our staff. You can tell that we are, we're not usually all remote, by the way. <laughs> we usually are in the office, but because of what's happening in, in Boise, we're all from our homes. So um, nice that you guys can join us today. And for those of you watching the recording, we very much appreciate it if you can fill out our survey. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you.